and the ancestors are looking out for us. Todd Hayes is exposing them, man. It's okay, you see that chair right there? See how big it is? Yeah. Now look at the Pope chair under. Scroll down, look at the Pope chair under. Never yeah. have it been made yeah. so good. Young TV. Young We running the game right TV. now. to take over. Yo. We hot into the game. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe button. If you just Yo. not too late. Share like on your Instagram, Facebook. Yo. If you too late. We broadcasting live from 2030, TV. baby. This was 1133, flip 44, and angel knot. <clears throat> so the title of this is Me and a God. So the premise, if you understand how powerful a person's enemies are, when an enemy is working on them and you can see it, you can understand by what method of oppression they're used to subjugate and hold a person down. So, in me and a God, you say we had to have a dog in every fight. And you have to know who is the person what are they the biggest threat of? Like, how, what part of their presence is threatening to who? And um, how much power can this person wield or influence to bust you upside your head and hold you down? Right? So, a couple things that y'all ought to be on the lookout for. The Fruit of Islam are going to be um, taking control of um, Secret Service and um, Central Intelligence. You're going to know when dignitaries come and you see the signature bow tie and uh, suits of the FOI, that's going to be a clue as to how close we are to closing everything out. You got to look at, also watch the news reporters. I said this like two years ago and a lot of people didn't catch it and didn't pay attention. But the news reporters on your most popular news shows is going to be replaced with new faces. The reason for that is, is this is how you're going to know that Central Intelligence operatives are being replaced with people that's going to push our agenda and the return the rise of the matriarch so they will be at, like sleeper cells they'll be activated to disclose certain information that before was not being disclosed by the old central intelligence 
MI5, KGB, MI6, Mossad, secret intelligence agencies of the world. They were controlling the media outlets. <clears throat> the importance of controlling the media outlets is you can influence public opinion in order to promote somebody or defame somebody. So by the same measure that they can promote you, they can use equal amount of vigor and force to make you look like the villain, right? So we knew from the uh, Maltese Falcon and a couple more of the movies out of the 50s, they was telling us when uh, um, Central Intelligence was taking over the media and they really got the stronghold after 1945 and the end of World War II, right? So the report just came from Roe down in Australia. She said they already switching out their reporters. So make sure y'all paying attention to that because when the new reporters come online, they're the ones that's going to be giving us what's called disclosure. The old reporters that was working under the old regime, they are part of the people that's being arrested by JAG and taken to the tribunals. It's a lot of people been reported to be taken off golf courses and other place by military uh, personnel for what? They're not telling us what photo. They're telling us that JAG arrested such and such. Well, why they arrest them? Why y'all ain't telling us why they arresting them? Right? So the military code is different from the civilian judiciary. It's a different system. Right? So they operate differently. All of these people that's been doing the dirt have to be told to the public. Y'all have to know everybody that was doing the dirt, and y'all got to know where was they at, who was they answering to, what their agenda was, because they told us what their agenda was in most cases. What was they trying to do? Most of them was in it for the money. Some of it was in it for the freakiness of it all. Some of it was in it for the false promises of longevity in life by the offers of adrenochrome. Whatever the case may be, they all had a different agenda. Some of them, a lot of them had the same agenda as others, but they all had an agenda. And their agenda exposes their alliances, and then you find out who they allied with, and then you track down the allies, and you find out who they answering to, and then you will begin to understand the whole uh, uh, criminal network and how it functioned. Um, they used the spider web as the layout, right? So just how you got the spider web connected certain key points. They made key points of connection that allowed them to put a grid of ignorance over us. They controlled the history books that was being written. They controlled the media that was telling us and reporting what we call news. That's why ain't nothing good on the news. They ever hardly ever have a, what's called a good news story. It's almost all bad news. Right? This is to keep the people feeling like a perpetual victim. Or like there's a perpetual threat around every corner that keeps you in a... <clears throat> keep you in a state of fear right um you should be hearing uh chatter about political prisoners and i was getting some information off the wind talker channel it was a lot of chatter going on about political prisoners and making the uh, public aware of the operations that generated the political prisoners why are they who is they uh, political ideas controversial to? Who are they faced off with to determine who can lock them up as a prisoner? That means whoever, whoever they are antagonizing controls enough of the government where they can fabricate these stories and put them in prison for a political approach to what's going on 
in the government and on the land. So whoever they piss off got enough governmental controls to use the judiciary, to use the penal system, to use the police forces in order to remove the people off the land, as they said in COINTELPRO. Now, a lot of us thought that the COINTELPRO program was just some stuff that them pro-black niggas with the dashikis and the Muslim niggas read, right? We don't want to hear that. But when you studying the protocols of Zion, when you studying the um, morals and dogmas, and you see in this pattern, and then you pull out this document, the mission statement for the counterintelligence program, and then you start saying, oh, shit, there's something here. This ain't smoke. This is the goddamn embers of the fire. This is the source data. Once you understand that, then you understand that somebody got to give us a, um, a countermeasure to counter the things that they are controlling in order for us to break free and get liberated from the areas of our life that they using to subjugate us. So you can't be oppressed without somebody holding you down. And any motherfucker that have to hold you down, he got to stay down there with you. He can't get up. Because if he get up, you get up. So whoever holding you down got to be down there with you in order to keep you down. So they look like us, but they not us. That's that conjure war. Remember in the George Washington Challenge, it said in 200 years that the descendants of the Moors and the ones who wear the sandals, they won't know what side of the water they came from. The only way this is possible is we had to be in some form of amnesia. Dr. Malachi called it the ghost spell, what they call the gospel. It's a play on words. It's a homonym. It's also an etymology, etymologically linked term, right? So they got us in the ghost spell using the blood and the rights by the assassination of Crispus Atticus. They wrote a secondary constitution, which caused them to have to move the capital from Philadelphia to D.C. But we're not seeing none of that because of the secret squirrel shit going on. All of the secret squirrel stuff that was going on behind the scenes is the design so that us, the organic Mississippi walking clay dirt niggas that went into this kind of war, we ain't never supposed to figure out who we is and that we came from over here and that we was here already. We was here for slave ships. We was here before the concept of a slave ship. We was here before Columbus, right? And that what well, there was no city over here named anything that's in that Bible until they brought the Bible. That's when they begin to name cities over here with the same name as the names in the Bible. Because how else can you overwrite the land? They didn't underwrite it. They overwrote it. That means they wrote on top of it where they want us to believe that they came from in the book from off the land when neither the book nor the motherfuckers that brought the book come from the land right well where they come from they got kicked out of Europe how they get kicked out of Europe who kicked them out why they ain't want them over there I thought they civilized them motherfuckers right so how can the motherfucker you civilize won't you go if once they get civilized, I mean that you had to teach them something that you was doing was so gross and negligent to their um, perception that they had to get rid of you. The statuary in Europe say they was eating babies. That's what the statuary say. Right? So if the statuary say that they was eating babies, and then in the history books it said they was making the elixir from the blood of the fetuses, in the Babylonian ma uh, blood magic, then we know what they was doing. Adrenochrome. Right? So you got people coming up missing, babies coming up missing, people's protesting, mothers is protesting. So if enough mothers protest, the fathers got to stand up and say, hold up. What's going on over there where these women is calling for the men to get rid of you motherfuckers? You have to go. So they kicked them out. 
Well, where did they go? Well, they first stop was in modern day Morocco, Tunis, and Algeria in Northwest Africa. Now, in the dogma, they tell us that this is Northwest Africa. That's the dogma. But the moral code say, no, this ain't Northwest Africa. This shit was here before Africa was ever named Africa. So how in the fuck can this be Northwest Africa? They say that this was Al Maghrib, where there's nowhere on the map where this is Al Maghrib, but Northwest Africa on the map is Al Maghrib. If you watch, you can see the game they playing. It's a shuffle. How you gonna overwrite the land and think that the people from the land not gonna never know that none of that Bible shit that had nothing to do with us before 1492 and that it was a contract and a ritualistic spell put on the people by the clergy because that's why they send them that's why they always sent the priests first they always sent the missionaries in to anywhere they wanted to conquer to seduce the people into following the edicts of the bible but they don't even know where the bible come from who wrote that shit it's all compiled in nicaea but what was the purpose they tell you if you study the council of nicaea what Constantine said his purpose was when he assembled the council because he couldn't conquer the organic um, spiritualist of the land he wanted to capture that shit and put it in the bottle how do you do that right so it's all conjure work it's all sorcery but it's being played on a group of people that's unaware of the implications of the spiritual attacks as long as you don't understand that the spiritual attacks is just as real as the physical ones, you will fight the physical attack, but you will never defend yourself from the spiritual attack. And as long as you're getting your ass whooped spiritually, you're going to continuously get your ass whooped physically. Because if it's a spiritual war that's being fought and you only fighting from the physical, you can't win. You can't win. Right, so um, some of y'all might be unaware that a couple of weeks ago <laughs> they had a particle called the female god particle that hit the earth. And this particle, they don't know where it came from. It just hit the earth. Now, in order for it to be a particle, that's mean it's a piece of subatomic matter. That means it's so small that you need the telescope to see it. How did they know it was there? Because even something that small has an effect. The more powerful the particle in the microcosm, the bigger the effect in the macrocosm. So what we see in subatomically as a small little feminine particle of the universe smashing into earth from nowhere, right before we align up with the solar flares and the solar storms and the solar winds that's telling the earth a whole bunch of information and before earth aligns um, with the center of the galaxy all of this stuff is successive codes coming in for the sisters these sisters is getting these source codes now before that they was getting what's called the earth sun dialogue this is the discussion between the widow and her son about how to clean up the dirt and by what frequency do the women need to vibrate in order for Atlas to shrug and, and purge itself of the parasites, right? So at the core of the earth, in the midst of the dialogue, the, it's like tuning the instrument. When it get properly tuned, where only the earthborn can align to the frequency, then the core of the earth is going to spout out a frequency and it's going to kill anything that don't belong here. Anything that doesn't have a mitochondrial resonance to the soil of the earth is going to be eradicated. This is to get rid of beings that came from other places that's not tied to the earth that's been dominating the earthborn. We couldn't remember because they kept us in a loop of Kali Yuga cycles of darkness 
by keeping us in the infinity loop that it was so difficult to wake from the slumber that it took years and years of individuals to come through and record the information so that one person can put it all together at the end, right? So now we understanding that the source codes is coming in that's adding to the frequency of the dialogue between the solar orb, sun, and the earth, right? So the earth and the sun is already made an agreement to get rid of the parasites. When the source codes come in, the source codes is coming from prime creator, Big Mama. And when these codes get to the center of the earth and goes into the core with the same frequency and pitch that's being told to Mother Earth for who to tune the women to. Any man that doesn't have a mitochondrial host is going to be turned off to come back later. That means you didn't do your self work. You wasn't um, trying to do anything, but you was uh, feeding the selfish gene. If you was feed overly indulging in feeding the selfish gene, well, you're going to hold the atmosphere up until you come back from the ancestral realms to live in the golden age because that's the only thing that's going to break you from your cycles of ignorance, right? <clears throat> so we go into these men. These are all elders on the, on the land right now. Most of them are that has been fighting the fight against the oppression, the oppressors and their machine. Different people address the different part of the machine. Like um, Imam Abu Jamal Alamin, formerly known as H. Rap Brown. Like a lot of us don't know that when in the 80s, he formed a Sunni Muslim community and they begin to do computer programming, um, code writing for computers. So he, he was the enemy directly with Silicon Valley. So his enemies that's pushing the switch on government to drop the hammer on him is coming out of Silicon Valley. We talking... Um, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and all them type of motherfuckers. You see how much money they had. So his his people was learning to write these computer codes, and that became belligerent to the techies in Silicon Valley. So his enemies sufficiently had the financial power and stroke to sit the government on him for a con com campaign contribution. Remember. When you got the money, if you know how to place the money, you can get the system to respond under the patriarchal rogue system. Now, under the matriarchy, the system that's rising as the old system is closed out, you won't be able to buy anything that you're supposed to earn. If it's, a work, if it's your life work, you won't be able to pay for your degree under the table. You're going to have to go to school and learn that shit so that you can do your function. Right. That's the major difference, because under patriarchy, you had a whole lot of PhDs that bought that shit outright with cash. And most of us don't know it. Some of the doctors flunked out of med school, but you would never know it because they paid for their degrees. And as long as you could pay for your degree under the old system, they was putting giving you the credentials to allow you to run rogue over the people. Can't do that no more. You got to have a track record. You got to have the receipts. You got to be tried, true, and tested. They're not from the, the, the sisters is not buying the same trickery that they fell for the last time, and I'm just the one that's telling them all of the tricks that they was ran that was ran on them, right? We call that being kind wise, wise to the kind artists and the dirt they do, right? So if I see what they did to take her power, my job is to tell her how to get it back, right? And now that I done been telling them how to get it back, they starting to wake up to the power of self. I'm not going to have to keep teaching them because there ain't no better teacher than women's intuition for a woman. But you have to calibrate it to accuracy. 
And a lot of the women don't never know that nobody never taught them how to calibrate their intuition for accuracy in order for them to know exactly what the problem is and exactly where to look. Sometimes when the women intuition tell you danger is too broad of a danger warning for you to tune in to exactly what it is and you just nut the fuck up across the board because you don't know where it's coming from. That shit can be fine tuned, so tuned that it can literally spell it out in alphabets for you. But you can't let it be broad spectrum because you get to catch the stuff that don't need to be in your field of energy influencing your perception. Right? So we know who H. Rap Brown pissed off besides the government because they already was trying to figure out a way to bring him down. And they finally got Silicon Valley to finance the effort. Right? So who was Malachi York enemy? Who was who was he a director front? He had multiple enemies, but they all came from the Vatican. The Catholic priest is over the degree of Christism. The Islamic priest is over the degree of Mohammedism. And the Hebrew priest is over the degree of Mosesism. And when he exposed all the fallacies in the three degrees to his clan, for us to have a tool to analyze the doctrines to determine if they valid or not, and if we should carry them into the new age, he triggered some very powerful people in Saudi Arabia or Mecca, he triggered some very powerful people in the Vatican. He triggered some very, very powerful people in so-called Israel, right? When you get those three on you, them the worst motherfuckers to have click up on you. They all under the Vatican as homosexual pedophile cults. They all come out of the Babylonian um, system from the captivity of the fake Jews in Babylon. This is the origin of their doctrines when they implemented the blood magic, the money magic, and the sex magic. And they brought it out of there and they influenced a lot of great leaders that were learning how to run government with their doctrines and the sorcery and the power that they was using. Like Queen, uh, back in the I think it was the 17, 1800s, John D. When he went and told them how to use the Babylonian blood magic to subjugate a group of people, right? That was before they came over here with that bullshit. But in the war 1812, when we begin to remember who we was because they wasn't doing nothing to maintenance the conjure, and we begin to take the ass to war and gave them an extension, Right? Now they maintenance in the conjure by establishing the modern education, by undermining the guilds, which was the families that was over particular parts of industry, right? The Smiths was over the iron workers guild. The goldsmiths was over the jewelers guild and the gold workers guild, right? And you had the mills who governed over the the milling process of the grains and different stuff like that. And also they, on the metal side, um, they were over what we call mill rights or those who make the tools or tool makers. So, or make fashion metal into um, stuff in factories. So all of these people names was tied to their profession because that's how we knew when we needed a mechanic we went to a family whose last name was Mechanics. We might not have spelt it the same way, though. Right? We might have spelt it uh, M-A-C-H-I-E-N-X. Right? Or we would uh, use the totem animal, like the, uh, what they call that, uh, Grease Monkey. Right? So the grease monkey might have a different name in a tribe that might sound like an English name, but it means grease monkey, they're mechanics. Those are the ones who tinker and fix on the automobiles. And we had electric automobiles that you didn't have to charge. 
Now all of a sudden you got to dig lithium, poison a bunch of babies and make a battery that you got to charge and only can drive for two hours. Come on now. The technological advancements under this closing of the Piscean age is pathetic. The technology that's been on earth before make this shit look like Tonka toys for kids. Well, y'all got to remember, right? I remember a lot of stuff I can't tell people about because they tell me I'm crazy. I didn't been through it already. So I already know from listening to my mama tell me how to navigate these mortals and not get caught up in their shenanigans, right? So Malachi enemies was the re religious establishment. That's who he pissed off directly. Even though he was pissing off the pol political arena with his awareness of the tribal structures and that they didn't have nothing to do with us jurisdictionally on the land. Then he, when he found that out, that's when he became a problem because now he can do what Noble Drew Ali did before he got infiltrated, right? He can go in, send um, chiefs wherever you at and get you out of their custody. They can't have that, right? But he got the record. It's called the Sacred Record of the United Nubian Nation of Moors. And let's set the record straight is an excerpt from the overall record, which gives us a direct descendancy chart, gives us all kind of tribal history that's not for the public domain, it's for the tribe. That's Malachi, York, Nubian Nation, the Amasi tribe. That's their information. And until they figure out that once they start organizing um, and realizing the, the, the charade, the fraud that was played on the Nuwabian nation and stop the end fighting and the bickering and the traitor shit and get the imposters out, shit, Pops will show up next week. He don't have to be in there. He only in there because his tribe fell apart when they snatched him away. They've been telling us the whole time, strike the shepherd scatter the flock right strike the shepherd scatter the flock so them some pretty powerful enemies to have Larry Hoover was the chairman of the tribal council he's the chairman of the board by birthright by blood and by right but who was his enemy who don't want him to see the streets as a man that could organize in his community, who was he pissing off? He pissing off the political structure. The political structure know that if, if the tribes call for a chief to give the report of this land, it's like the president giving the state of the state address. He is the chief that's supposed to come and give the report to the collective tribes of what's taking place on the land and why we don't got our shit. As long as he has the political jurisdiction of spokesperson in the collective tribes, he can't perform his function if he's a bond servant. So that neutralizes him from telling y'all who the enemy is, the methods they use to oppress us, where they came from, the wars we've been fighting against them, we never stop fighting them. Contrary to popular opinion, war evolves over time, right? So they don't want the spokesman of the chieftains to speak up because if he speak up, all of the chiefs begin to move in unison across the land. And that's going to be a problem for illegal fiction masquerading as your government. They don't want these outlaw tribes communicating in the open. Because we don't keep shit secret from the clan. We just put it in a way that if the clan know, you know. As they say, if you know, you know. So when the chief starts speaking, the clan start hearing it. They start understanding what's being moved on the land. It ain't nothing they can do to stop the restoring of the matriarchy. It is nothing they can do to, re to stop the reinstituting of the great law. They subjugated us long enough and we fell for it, right? But we not falling for it no more because we understand how they move now. We know how they infiltrated us and we know where all the infiltrators at, right? 
So them were some powerful enemies, but who did Jeff Ford piss off? Why was he such an enemy? Chief Malik Angel Bay, Peace Stones. Why? They the law. They the law. The job that the Department of Defense does is Chief Malik Angel Bay job. That's his job to secure the collective tribes across the land. No big eyes, no little U's. He is your security chief for the entirety of the Americas, North, Central, and South. He is supposed to, they got to keep him in what we call bond servant status so he can't never call the tribes and tell the tribal chiefs what's going on. Therefore, they won't listen to him because he's been labeled as a criminal and therefore you good about law-abiding American citizens didn't pay this Negro no man here. He can't do nothing but cause you a whole bunch of trouble and heartache when he piss off one of us old good boys. And us old good boys look just like the motherfucker you looking at. We just come from a different bloodline. They played the shit out of us. I'm unraveling this shit for the cleanse. It's up to y'all to decide what, how we want to get rid of them. Most of the leadership of the um, infiltrators, the colonizers and settlers, most of the leaderships that's been behind the machine, what we call it the cabal, most of them have been relieved of permanent duties of breathing. Majority of them. There's still some stragglers around that need to go before the tribunals. Right? But that's going to have to be for public awareness, public knowledge. Because in the tribal networks, the, the clan's people have to be made aware of what major moves is being made across the land so they can support any righteous endeavor and they can interfere and interrupt anything that's not in the greatest good of the collective clans. Malachi say, under one condition, under one law, what is he talking about? One condition is restore the great mother. There is no other negotiation other than restore the great mother. And there is no other law but the great law. And the great law is rooted in the first principle. And the first principle is some stuff called love. If you're not operating from the great law and you don't support restoring the great mother, I feel real bad for you, but you won't be fucking here. I don't know where you're going to be at, but here is not going to be your place. If you waiting on a motherfucker to come surfing out of a cloud with some stringy ass hair with the Philharmonic Orchestra behind him to liberate your ass, he not coming. The drag queen is not coming. You fell for the drag queen story long enough. Now it's time for you to restore the queen to heaven and earth to her rightful place and put the widow back on her throne and leave these motherfuckers to their own devices because they're self-destructive. Organize the sisters. Let them know that if they get back into that frequency of being a good mother, how you feel when you're in the kitchen cooking for your children, knowing that you're going to make their stomachs full and their hearts happy by the taste and the flavor of the food. Get back to that energy because that is the energy that we want to facilitate in the raising of the matriarchy. Soul food energy. This food for the fucking soul. But if mama don't cook the food when she's in the state of love, it's going to cause us to get sick instead. It's going to become GMO. Right? So even the GMO can be healed with the love of the mother, believe it or not. The love, the unconditional love that mothers give children, that's the frequency. That's the exact frequency of heaven. That's why whoever told you that your mama wasn't God, that's the first sin that you was ever given. Because in the hearts and minds of the child, mama is God until somebody teaches them different. And that's where the problem come in. Angel Bay was, they say, what they say he was doing? What they accuse him of? Most people don't even know. They accuse him of collaborating with Muammar Gaddafi to get weapons to overthrow the government. That's what he was in prison for. All this time, fucking 40 something years, because he just wanted to be the chief for his clans that he needed to be in order to liberate the land. 
but the clans couldn't see him before because of the trickery of the enemy. He don't smile a lot. I cannot fucking blame him. Hopefully when this shit over, he can't stop smiling. Because he gonna get some motherfucking get back. He gonna get his lick back. I don't give a fuck how long it takes. He gonna get his lick back. All them dirty rotten motherfuckers. He gonna, he gonna tell them how he wanna get his lick back. And it's pretty much gonna be the same thing Malachi said. Under one condition. Under one law. And the one condition is restore great mother. And the one law is the great law. We will follow no other law that's not the great law. Now you can get in the middle of these clans as we putting our mama back in her rightful place. And that's going to be the wrong place to be because you will be caught between a rock and a hard place coming together fast. Right? So y'all probably heard of Dr. Amos Wilson who wrote uh, Awakening the Natural Genius of the Black Child. Y'all probably heard of Dr. Bobby E. Wright. And um, y'all probably heard of Dr. Nathan and Julia Hare. Uh, rest in power, Dr. Nathan. But these people pissed off the establishment. They pissed off the Department of Education. The No Child Left Behind was the next level of indoctrination and oppression for our children, right? There's a pale-faced lady named Charlotte Izzardby. Look her up on YouTube while she break down all of the cancer of the No Child Left Behind program and where they was going next with the oppression and subjugation through the educational program, right? So these are some of our greatest thinkers. Uh, Dr. Haki Marubuti, um, um, what's my man's name? Uh, Breaking the Chains of Psychological. Name Akbar. These are thinkers. These are people that when the tribes come back together, they gonna be part of our think tank and problem solving committee, right? Um, we wish we still had Dr. Clark. We wish we still had Dr. Ben. We wish we still had Shake Onto Diop. We wish we still had Walter Rodney. We wish we still had Franz Fanon. We wish we still had Maurice Bishop. We wish we still had Stephen Biko. We wish we still had Malcolm X, El Hashim, Malik El Shabazz. We wish we still had Martin. We wish we still had Mega Evers. But since we don't, we still got a collection of great minds that walk among us on a day-to-day -day basis that's been trying to inform us of the corruption of the enemy and the oppressive measures that they've been using to keep us ignorant and subjugated, right? So they pissed off the Department of Education, which is a critical part to oppressing the people. You have to control their education, their erudition, their rites of passage, their intellectual developmental processes. If you don't control them, you will not control these people. This is why Larry told me, stop gang banging and go brain banging. Hit them goddamn books and don't come out till you got some answers. I got a whole lot of answers, but do our tribes want to hear them? We get attacked by our tribes that never heard it before worse than we get attacked by the enemy who know exactly what you're talking about, right? Just because you haven't never heard it before, that don't mean that it's not true. It just means that you haven't been exposed and your cognitive distance is tripping you up. I'm not here for no money. I'm not here for no fame. If I want, look, I could have been, I got bars. <laughs> if I wanted to be in the entertainment industry, I would have kept pursuing music or acting. Right? I'm not a good actor, but shit, I can write some bars. I'm a poet to the heart. But this situation is a little more different. We had great poets. Right? And some of those poets went in to tear the system down so that we can build one that's more advantageous to our people. When we don't understand the sharecropping agreements, we won't understand how these artists are being fleeced from the wealth that they generate by people like Sony and Interscope, 
right? That's using black labels like Death Row, Bad Boy, LaFace Records, So So Deaf. These major conglomerates, they give a couple of us a few pennies to sell out the rest of us without even knowing we're selling them out. Because some of us would stand up to the enemy and say, no, nah, I ain't selling my artists out. And they know this. So they can't never let you know that they know that they tricking you. They got to always, when you discover their deception, they have to play dumb. Oh, we didn't know that was in there. That clause was for a contract for somebody else. Right? They run that bullshit on us like we don't know no better. We know better. Right? So, um, some of y'all heard about the Philadelphia move and being bombed by the governor and the mayor of Philadelphia. John Africa <clears throat> was an advocate of growing your own food, using your food as your medicine, using your community as a collective resource to raise children. If parts of the community have to go out and generate income by selling labor, the other parts of the community educate and raise the child. The sisters with him, like the sister Ramona Africa, is uh, I think she's the current spokesperson right now, but these sisters were some loving, kind, caring sisters, and they still bombed them. The brothers was not bothering nobody. It was minding their business, and they still bombed them and burnt them down. They murdered John Africa, and he, who did he piss off? Department of Agriculture. He picked off, pissed off Department of Agriculture when he started trying to the Food and Drug Administration, trying to get people to grow their own food, control the food that you feed your child, so that you control the health of your family. And they knew this. Philadelphia, these motherfuckers got to go. They influencing the city of brotherly love. They not supposed to wake up yet. They not supposed to be tribally aware yet. The conjure's not broken yet. Why is y'all letting this Negro practice this holistic shit in the middle of these other niggas? He gonna contaminate them and infect them with the ideas of being self-sufficient and living off the fat of the land. We cannot have that. That nigga got to go if we had to blow his ass up. And what they do? Blew his ass up. Shot their ass up. We ain't even talking about the shooting before the bombing. They shot so many bullets in that motherfucker, they couldn't even count them all. Then they bombed them. You got babies in the house. But we don't like to talk about that. Because that happened to some other Negroes on another part of the land. And if y'all don't realize that that's directly tied to you, you ain't one of us. Everything they do is to keep us from becoming sentient to who we is on the land. Our genetic motherfucking link to that Mississippi clay dirt. Oh, black water, keep on rolling. Mississippi moon gonna keep on shining on. They don't want us following our cultural ways. They don't want us being aware of the idea that everything you see, we invented that shit. They want us to believe the out of Africa theory, but they don't want us to even consider the out of America theory. Right? They don't even want us to consider that all of the buildings over here in the Americas is older than all of the rest of the buildings around the world. They don't want us considering those realities because now they have to explain too much shit and they have to try to, they have to reveal their lies. We didn't come on those slave ships. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The good ship Plymouth crashed into us. We didn't crash into it. So you can go back and you can tell your Pope and that motherfucking lizard bitch that used to live in the basement that we not buying the bullshit. We see through the games and it's over. In the new world, all of these political prisoners need spokespersons from their home camp. 
And these spokespersons have to embody the spirit of that leader in order to speak up for him until you see him. You can't stop. We need more phase ones speaking up for Malachi than just phase one. Malachi didn't only raise one soldier that can speak for him. The Nuwabians got some articulate, intellectually inclined individuals that need to be speaking up for their elder. Fuck the bullshit. Faze is not the only one. And if y'all putting all that pressure on that man by himself, y'all wrong when it's all of y'all ate off Malachi plate. If all of y'all ate off the man plate and y'all not speaking up for what's right, you don't need to be part of the community. And they need to treat you like the traitor you are. The same go with Angel Bay. Stones. Shot town. Start bitching about y'all chief. Start calling y'all chief to come forth. If you don't call for him, he can't answer you. And he need a certain amount of his clan to call him forth. It's the same shit. I, we already did the crypt measure. The crypts and already did. They called Big Tookie. Made them thaw this man out. He froze in Area 51 for the liberation of the collective clans. I'm sorry, Tookie, but I wouldn't have been the one getting froze. I'd have had to come back in the next life. Fuck that dumb shit. I hate being cold. Right? But he let them freeze him so he can take part in the liberation and offer his life experience as an educational tool to the youth. I don't know how he gonna explain this agreeing to get froze shit to him cause there's nothing he can tell me to convince me to let a motherfucker put me in some ice 30 below zero. I'm not finna do it. I love my people but god damn it I'm not finna be that goddamn. cause that's too goddamn cold for a nigga that's tropical. He did that shit. That's, that's the first principle right there. That's when Larry talk about the first principle being love if a nigga let you freeze them For the liberation of his people. That nigga love his people. Right? A lot of y'all don't know that it's been already approved if the bloods come together as a clan. They already got a voice at the highest court out the gate. Why? Why? But they want you to think that it's a pretending that's a blood. That's part of the blood tribe. That's them power rules. The Piru, Big Pudding out of the Piru Nation is the founder of a mirror flip from Pudding, which is the 5 percenter off the East Coast. King Sun being the median in the two. Talk about King Sun, who did the song Big Shots. Right, y'all understand? Because these are uh, tribal traditional signs that most of us are overlooking. So when we say King Sun is the medium, he is the West Coast five percenter out of the Blood Nation. This is what it is, right? He's the chief. When anybody that they call Sunny in your neighborhood, Sunny, Sunny Boy, Ra, Luther, them chiefs, they named that on purpose. They mama knew what they was doing from the cultural standpoint, and you will know them because they're gonna always want to be in charge of shit. Right? That's how, that's how we wired. We want to be in charge of shit. Some of us ain't wired that way. Like, that's why my name ain't got nothing to do with the sun. The forest representing the greens because I work for the sisters. Right? So, the, the ones of us that work for the sisters, we don't care about being that guy. We care about where my sister shit at. Nigga, fuck what you talk about. I don't give a fuck if you is a big chief. And that you is 6'5", 305 pounds of solid muscle. My sister gonna get her shit, nigga. You getting your ass beat today by this 250-pound motherfucking gorilla. I'm about to dribble your ass like a basketball if my sisters don't get their shit. Right? So, by knowing who people's enemy is, the giant Africa, he pissed off some powerful people that could sick the government on when you understand that, it helps you to understand why this person 
can be disgraced through the media because the media is controlled by the government. And the media can make them look guilty of sin. And at the same time, it can make the police that murder a motherfucker look like the victim. So, Big Tookie, since we're speaking of him, who did he piss off? The Crips and the Bloods is a, what we call two sides of the same tribe. They two ancient tribes. The Piru is the catalyst for waking up the Bloods. The Crip, C-R-I-P, is the flip to Piru with the C on his side. This is how they describe Tuki waking up the two largest clans on the land. Their natural sworn enemy is the slave patrols that they call police. This is why, go back to the chokehold, right? This is the, this is the mentality that bred Bloods and Crips. In the 60s and the 70s, they were shooting us in the back out west and they was putting us in a chokehold using the baton and choking us to death, literally. This is why he woke them two tribes up like that. He wake them two tribes up, they here for war. The only difference is when you take the leadership away, you can't, you can't redirect the tribe when you ain't out there walking with the tribe, right? Because they follow us in the war. They follow us to combat following that if, uh, big Tuki, they following the afro he's what we call one of the afro kings the afro kings is ancient mississippi and bloodline tied to louisiana bayou and going into texas right his clan they follow the chief with the afro and the, they know him when they see him he's out front big ass motherfucker with with an afro Always got these towers with him. Them, them, them niggas they call giants. Them six eight, six nine, three hundred pound motherfuckers that lift all the weight in the weight room and say put some on there and don't fit. Them his crew. That's who he come with. Crooked man walking across the land, right? Walking lightning. He is the patron saint of the handicap and those who are wrongfully convicted. And his um. Mirror Chief is Geronimo, Chief Geronimo, Geronimo Pratt out of Mississippi. Geronimo Pratt was trumped up case the same as Tukey was a trumped up case. If you put them side by side, you will get confused as to which case is which case. Took Johnny Croc Cochran damn near 30 years to get um, Geronimo Pratt out. And once he got him out, he had to get low because they wasn't done with them. Just because you get from under their thumb, Mutula Shakur, don't mean they done with your ass. They will poison you. They'll shoot you with a heart attack gun. They'll shoot you with all kind of shit. And so the Chiefs got to get low. And then they got to let the next wave of Chiefs try to wake the clans up. I'm here to try to wake the clans up. I don't want shit. I'm going to get my shit when my sisters get theirs. I want the clans woke. I want the tribes to realize what's going on on the land. Call for the chief. Fuck the motherfucking presidential elections. Fuck your senatorial and your gubernatorial elections and your electoral colleges. Call for the chief. Right? Let the chief speak. Zero one. Let the chief speak. That's the hashtag zero one. Let the chief speak. They all got to let the chief speak. Now, I got a feeling that the nation going to be putting some good news in the final call. So some of y'all got to keep an eye out on that for me. Um, let me know what's going on with the fruit because they, they making moves over there in silence and, and we ain't watching like we posed to. Right. But. These trumped up cases that the police is putting on people in California is very well documented from your rampart to your crash units. This shit was going on all over the country. Your gang task force. These was the natural enemy to the tribes. 
We looking at the police as if they're there for us. They are policy enforcers that's here to do the bidding of an interim government that's masquerading as our rightful government on tribal land. Anything that was outside of D.C. up until 2018 was, of 2017 when the totem pole was erected was tribal land. When that totem pole was erected, the Plymouth Rock bullshit was over, but our tribes are not watching. Um, go back and look for, look it up. Tribes march totem pole to D.C. That's taking back that 10 square mile that the, Mason, that the Masonic lodges of different degrees had left um, signatures in the form of sacred geometry on the ground in order to conjure that motherfucking energy of power to the artificial government source. 